sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy mild god in sin is reconciled joyful all ye nations rise join the triumphs of the skies nature rise and worship him who is born at bethlehem hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king christ by eyes heaven adored christ the everlasting lord lead in time behold him come offspring of a virgin's veiled in flesh the god at sea hail the incarnate deity pleased as man with man to appear jesus sorry Isaiah chapter 9 The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and for ever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Captive ears 
Chapter 1 In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month for no word from God will ever fail. 
I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Matthew chapter 1 This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus.
Luke chapter 2 In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. An angel came to see Mary. She was doing laundry, and then the angel just appeared and she was really scared. So Gabriel was like, Mary, you're gonna have, what? I can't, I can't say it good. Mary, you're gonna have a baby. I, you're gonna have a baby and you will call him Jesus. And then Mary was like, I'm not gonna have a baby yet. I'm only a teenager and I'm not married. Then the angel Gabriel told Joseph that Mary is not lying. She, you are having a new baby. And so they met up. They went to Bethlehem, which was Joseph's old town. They ride a donkey. <laughs> I don't know. A camel. Oh, yeah, a camel. She said, this donkey's fast. Well, they tried to go to a hotel, and they asked the keeper um, for a place to stay. The keeper said, we have no rooms. Literally, no rooms. <laughs> so Mary and Joseph walked away sadly, but then he said, the only place in here in Bethlehem hand that, that you can stay, stay is a staple, and then he just pointed the way and they followed. When the shepherds were taking care of the sheep, then they saw angels. The angels said, a new baby is getting born, who is king of the Jews. The angel were singing. Glorious. And then the shepherd said, I think we should go there and meet him. The second, I think, said, yeah, I agree with you. And the other said, yeah, me too. They had to walk through a bunch of grass and bushes, maybe have to camp out a night. And then the wise men heard about it. And then a star appeared. We should probably follow that star. It's pointing down to the barn. So maybe we should follow it. Maybe. So the wise men went to Jesus. They gave them gifts. A stuffed animal, like a hippo one, to have at home. Some diapers, and some wipes, and some milk, some shoes, some Jordans. Gold, Frank, and Latimer. And I don't know how I would survive in that barn. Too stinky, too crowded, and ugh. I think he probably pooped because the room was very smelly. Thank you for coming. He's adorable. He's going to be our best friend. I love you, and... You're the best baby I ever seen. There, I said it. <laughs> the new baby is going to change the world. Love has come to 
Luke chapter 2 And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So ten. 
Matthew chapter 2 After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. One day, one ordinary day, when the world kept turning and life kept moving and the city kept bustling and people kept hustling. One day, one ordinary day, a mum laid eyes on the love of her life for the very first time. A baby boy born in Bethlehem, awaited, wanted, finally here. And the world kept turning and life kept moving and the city kept bustling and the people kept hustling. But for her, time stood still. As God in skin became her kin, him with her and her with him. One day, one ordinary day, when the world kept turning and life kept moving and the city kept bustling and people kept hustling, one day, one ordinary day, she lost him for the very first time, her 12-year-old boy missing in Jerusalem. 
and the world kept turning and life kept moving and the city kept bustling and people kept hustling. But for her, time stood still until he was found and returned, him with her and her with him. One day, one ordinary day, when the world kept turning and life kept moving and the city kept bustling and people kept hustling, one day, one ordinary day, she lost him for the last time. Her 33-year-old boy, dead in Jerusalem. Broken, then buried, then gone from here. And the world kept turning and life kept moving and the city kept bustling and the people kept hustling, but for her, time stood still as she grieved great tears and longed and dreamed of him with her and her with him. But one day, one extraordinary day, he will wipe her tears away. All those tears she cried as they reunite and her pain grows dim and it's him with her and her with him. And his mother's tears won't just be dried, but all the tears that have ever been cried by you and by I, gently erased in the arms of Christ as he gathers us into his healing embrace. Can't you see the joy on his face? For that one day when he bled and he died, he fixed his eyes on this one day when all would be right and your pain would grow dim and it would be him with you and you with him. Today is just an ordinary day. The world keeps turning and life keeps moving and the city keeps bustling and people keep hustling, trying to outrun the tears, the grief, the pain, the mystery of all the years, the fears of what will yet be. But what if today, on this ordinary day, we let time stand still? and we stand still just until we see him. He who walks through death itself to come to us, to be with us, to comfort us, reveals to us that today with its trouble piled high is not the end, the final day. There is a day that will yet be when fears are stilled and striving cease, when all is calm and all is peace and everything is as it should be. One day, one extraordinary day. The darkest dark will melt away. No death, no ache, no shame, no sin. Just him with you and you with him. Stars and 
Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy, Do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy. Do you hear what I hear? A song, a song, high above the trees, with a voice as big as the sea. With a voice as big as the sea. It's remarkable to think that a baby boy born in a stable, no prestige, no privilege, no social media or social status, political campaigns or private airplanes. And yet, he turned BC into AD. He flipped the world on its head. He's the most famous name around the globe inspired the most read book ever written. He reconnected us to heaven and in turn brought heaven down to earth. And now he offers us redemption, a fresh start, freedom, so that we can hold our heads high and march through this life knowing that we are never alone, that every woman and man, boy and girl, to all of us who feel like we have nothing left, nothing to bring, that we can know that God is smiling at us, that He's loving us, that we are enough. So light up that Christmas tree, stand under the mistletoe, surround yourself with the ones you love the most. And together, let's celebrate the greatest news this world has ever known. King
nature see and heaven and nature see 